Afternoon, guys. It's about 1445 on a beautiful Saturday afternoon. We're out here, uh, Rio Puerco, a little wash out here. We're gonna go over a really cool build. It's a 2017 TRD Pro 4Runner. 18? 17. 17. TRD Pro 4Runner. We're just gonna go, just like we did on the other ones, we're gonna go front to back. I'm gonna try to just go over what we've done to the truck and why, and uh, just to answer as many questions as we can. So this truck is a photographer's truck. This one gets way out in the middle of nowhere, and uh, he has a trailer on this, so that we'll go over as well. But uh, the idea was to set up a base camp and haul camera equipment in here safely and clean, and uh, be able to go pretty much anywhere he wants, uh, weeks at a time, and, and shoot wildlife <clears throat> all over the country. So we wanted it to be very roadworthy, as we do all of our trucks that we build. So this one here is, is running a little below, little over a stock size tire, but the, the tool that we were going after here is 100% self-sufficiency. We are running Hutchinson's on this truck, and we'll go over that in a little bit. But uh, starting front to back, uh, body armor, we're running a CBI, their new aluminum front bumper for this. Very, very low profile to the grill, but a pet peeve of mine is not being able to see the winch. This one, you can see the entire drum without really looking for it. So if you did have to recover yourself at night or you needed to run your winch at night and there's nobody else around, you can see your drum effortlessly. You can see what's going on in the drum. We, uh, we really like to run Factor 55 equipment as far as hooks, shackle, uh, attachments, anything like that. We, write, we like to run Factor 55. This is probably about four or five tools in one. You'll see this on a lot of our builds. Synthetic winch lines, uh, three quarter inch uh, bow shackle mounts is pretty basically standard on all of our recovery equipment. So the CBI uh, front bumper and matching skid. I also, uh, just for functionality purposes, a lot of these bumpers, because they are very low profile, it, it can be hard to locate the control box for the winch. So I like to relocate that switch right here. This is the come up 9.5 RS, so it's a nine and a half thousand pound winch with a uh, synthetic line. It also has, just like on the Tacoma we did, has a wireless remote. So that's a nice small remote you can keep on a carabiner, keep it on your pocket, <clears throat> in your pocket, but then you can use a corded remote right here. It's really nice and low profile. Uh, walking around to the driver's side. What we did with the suspension on this is it, it considered our stage two, it's a long travel. We're running the Total Chaos plus two, long travel in the front, upper and lower control arms, chromoly axle shafts, which are extended two inches. King, control uh, coilovers with the adjuster knob on here. Has, it's just proving itself extremely effective, so we, we keep going back to that. <clears throat> and it's, it's a very predictable uh, install for all of this stuff, very, very clean and it aligns just to your, your factory specs, no problem. Uh, we also kind of do a couple little things that, that work out as far as your cam tab gussets for your alignment. So if you were ever to side load your wheel in soft sand or ruts or anything like that, you know your cam, cam tabs for your alignment, your lower control arm are gonna be held in place. It's far stronger than the factory little paper thin steel they use. Um, we are running a 488 gear in this with an ARB locker in the front. <clears throat> we, uh, this one has a full skids underneath. We're running, like I said earlier, the 17 inch Hutchinson beadlock wheel with the Toyo Open Country uh, RT. It's a, again, it's a very effective tire, especially for sand. It's kind of kind of good all around. Uh, sidewalls are nice and soft. If you, if you need to air down a little bit, you get a good uh, strong sidewall, but it's still nice and flexible. This particular one's a 285 70 17 that's on this truck. And we are running a 488 gear with this. You can run a 456, no problem. But because we're towing a trailer with it and carrying, carrying uh, stuff like that on the highway a lot, we're gonna run a 488. Seems to balance out really well. Uh, moving on back for body armor. This is the All Pro Apex series uh, rock slider with the uh, kick out in the back. Uh, it's really nice, low profile fit and still you know, effective. It stands off the side of the body, probably about three inches. Nice and nice and uh, effective there. Uh, for a rear suspension, this is, because this is the stage two, the stage two for the four runners for what we're doing in our stage two includes the total chaos 
chromoly link kit underneath. The, uh, the King in the back is an eight inch travel shock with remote reservoir with uh, adjuster. The stage two also incorporates the Curry Anti-Rock sway bar. We make our own mounts for this to keep everything tucked up really nice and high and it cycles really nice. You never really have to worry about it. You don't hear it hitting anything or making any noise because with the long travel in the front, we eliminate the front sway bar altogether. This is a heavier sway bar for the rear. and keeps everything, keeps everything smooth uh, for lateral stability. The uh, rear armor here is the new Expedition 1 rear bumper, extremely impressive rear bumper. The, uh, <coughs> the swing out is, is extremely clean. I, I really like their locking mechanism too. And another reason this, with this trailer, this truck being having a trailer on it, another reason why I like the dual swing out is because it's a shorter swing out. So you can kind of split the load of whatever you're carrying on the back. So if you have a lot of fuel or, what, or high lift jack, you've got a lot of weight, you have two hinges rather than one hinge and a latch. So with this, with this particular bumper, the swing outs are identical and you can configure them any way you want. So with this one, they have their, their own proprietary uh, latch system. So as you open it, it's very easy to open. There's a trailer on here and it's nowhere near the trailer as you open it. Locks into place. You can reach it from either side of the vehicle. This is your camera relocation kit. So your camera is extended from underneath, underneath the handle here to out here. And you can see everything between the tire and your, your fuel cans. Now you can access the back of the truck and never take the trailer off. And this is where you'll find the goose gear setup that we like to go with. <clears throat> There's a plate that, that Brian makes from goose gear that can span all the way up to the front seats if you want to. It's a very modular system. So the drawers are very strong drawers, really clean latches like we've, like we've shown in the past. You, they can, they're easily removable. They're made of wood, very smooth, very strong. Tie down tracks, you can put eyelets or eyelets down in here, tie things down to it, put a rubber mat up here if you need to. We'll show you uh, how we did his onboard air here, kind of concealed. It's uh, kind of particular to what we're, what we're doing. So when the rear seats are folded up, you don't see anything there. You, see, you don't see it, but you've got easy access to your onboard air, hoses, whatever you need is all stashed in there. Nice and nice and clean. In the rear bumper, we're using the Squadron Pro uh, in, the, in uh, the holes, round light holes that they, that they have machined in here. Great use of light out in the back. Nice, we pro, I think this one is the, the work scene uh, beam pattern, so it's very, very wide. And it's, it's a great, it's a great you know, backup or work light at night. We have that, that wired separately, so it's not wired in with the backup light. It's just an individual switch that you can, that you can run by itself. Uh, looking up to the top of the, the truck, we're running the uh, front runner. Th this front runner uh, rack is kind of unique to what we've been doing. On the early full length roof racks for the forerunners, we use the universal track up top and we can extend it a little bit further forward than the, uh, the up, right up to the windshield, which is where we mount the 50 inch Baja Designs light bar. We are making our own brackets uh, right now. We're gonna still continue to refine that and make it look a little nicer, but it's a very strong bracket because you don't want that light bouncing around in front of you at night. Uh, we're using the S2 Pros again on the, on the uh, roof rack for good work, work area light, camp light, and it's adjustable. We can just reach up and tilt it, shine it out to the side. If we're looking for something at night, camp spot or something at night, you got, You've got lateral light as well as up in front of you. So you got 360 degrees worth of light. So these rear bumpers are so adjustable with both swing arms that you can, you know, this is a fairly small tire for, you know, aftermarket size tires, but you can locate that anywhere on this. If you see all these holes here, you can kind of locate this all both sides, either way you want. So it's, it's it, it kind of leaves that options, options open for you. We'll just secure this and you just kind of see very very easy to do push your latch in lock it make sure it's just it's just very very clean just stays right where it should another key feature about this one is the locking pin that i really like it's uh it takes minimal effort you don't really a lot of these you kind of have to wrestle with if they're heavy you just push your tab to the side 
right here and it raises itself up and unlocks and then you can just pull it closed and then it'll reset itself <clears throat> and this one here has got it got the 48 inch high lift jack you can see this this bracket here is also you you can maneuver it any way you want two four gallon gas cans on here fit nice and tight and that's that's it your bearings are serviceable you can just undo this cap if you needed to re-grease them and uh that's that's about as clean as it can get really for your your rear rear bumpers the roof rack is is left open you can do that i really like to have an empty roof rack if i can uh there's a tremendous amount of room up there you could put firewood anything anything up there long planks of whatever wood furniture awnings whatever you want it's a great use of space up here and you can kind of see this is the track, the T-slot track I was talking about. We run this all the way up, almost to the windshield. It's very, very secure. We've got four feet on either side. So you could even put a floor in the rack and stand on it if you wanted to, and uh, have a nice elevated position to shoot photography or anything you want. <clears throat> Keep extra fuel. We are running a snorkel on this truck. It's very effective out here. We, we get a lot of silt, silt roads and dust. And snorkels aren't just for water. Your, your intake comes in through the front fender. So all of that air, you know, is coming in right above your tire. If, if you've got uh, any kind of ingress into your air filters coming from right there. So if you can extend that up above the, the roof line of the truck, you're going to get good clean air out of there in most cases. This is good for water, but there's, there's a lot more you have to do for water, for wading uh, in deep water anyway. So the snorkel in our region is good for dust and silt. <clears throat> Moving on to the trailer, we've got an X-Venture XV3 trailer running the exact same wheel and tire as the truck. So effectively, you have three spare tires uh, for the truck, including the spare on the truck. You've got a full set of four tires if you needed them, which would be a, a bad day. But uh, <clears throat> it, uh, it's, it's, it tows really well. I mean, you, you kind of really don't know it's there. You've got to remember that you've got a trailer behind you because it, it'll just track wherever you go. Uh, the idea behind this is for the base camp. Like we talked about earlier, you can keep your refrigerator in here. You have, we have the Overland solar, solar panels adhered to the top of the tent, the IECAB tent, and daisy chained together and then down into the charge controller into the, in the nose box of the trailer where all your batteries and electrical components are. You can, we set it up so you could just unplug it, stash it if you wanted to, and uh, remove the tent or anything like that. Nothing's hardwired into the into the trailer. So we are also running a front runner slimline two rack on here. The Alucab brackets mount perfectly to this and uh, we've got the we can kind of set the width and length any way we want to on this. We're running uh, this trailer comes with if you opt for it comes with your rigid uh, lights on the sides for work light camp light all the way around. The we're running a Dexter axle on this trailer, which comes standard on all the uh, all the X-Venture trailers. And there's a 20 gallon water tank in this as well that you don't see, the, the bed is empty. So the, the fuel, the water tank is up underneath above the axle with a skid plate. So it's, it's completely protected. Uh, we've got a full size spare tire carrier back here for the trailer mounted right to the, right to the tailgate. And your little camp table is right inside there. You can open this all the way up, 180 degrees, set up for camp. And then here's the ARB fridge. This is a roll top tonneau, so you can just kind of roll this out of the way if you wanted to. Electrical outlets on either side, so you can, you can kind of put whatever you want to in here. It's on a, a fridge slide. The, uh, this, is, this is the Alucab fridge slide, so you can use it as a straight fridge, fridge slide if you wanted. This one we have as a straight. If you wanted to bring it out further or have it on a set of drawers, this will also drop down. But it's, this is low enough to where you can just reach straight into it and not have to worry about dropping it down. <coughs> you can see there's pretty good, I mean, there's D-ring tie downs inside. You've got your stabilizer jacks right here if you wanted to set up camp. You can kind of lift the tires off the ground slightly make it a real nice stable platform. The, uh, there's enough room to put probably half an elk in there if you wanted to. Camp chairs, whatever you want. And uh, keep everything kind of locked up and clean. So this is, uh, 
set up. We're gonna be putting a, a, a 270 degree Alucab awning on here. So to set your camp up. The nice thing about the trailers is it's pretty low. So you don't really have to worry too much about having a, having a huge ladder. But uh, you can take two rods out of here and camp set and you're done. Leave your bed, bed made inside and uh, you know, I mean, if you had a quick overnight stay somewhere, you could just load up and take off pretty easily. But uh, the whole idea is for efficiency. You know, when you get to camp, you don't want to have to set camp up for 45 minutes or break camp down. You know, you know, take all day to break camp down. Dust free, you don't have to worry about any dust or water or anything getting inside. Uh, it's a little, little, uh, little home away from home. Uh, we've the uh, solar panels, so you, you've got T slot tracks in the top of this, so you could run crossbars if you wanted to put your bikes, surfboards, whatever you want to on there, still raise it up. You don't have to remove your gear to get it to, to set up camp. Solar panels stay right there, charges the batteries. You could even plug it into your truck if you wanted to, just make a little bit longer extension cord. And uh, I mean, it's a, it's one of the trucks you kind of have to look at to see see what it's got going on with it. But it's it, the idea was just very clean and, and functional, like like all of them. So um, don't really don't really have anything else on this one. Next on the list is the supercharger for this, the Magnuson supercharger. We feel like that's going to be a pretty effective uh, tool for kind of addressing the engine management side of things. With this thing completely loaded down, you're not gonna be maxing the truck out all the time on pulling grades or sand or snow or anything like that. So the idea is for the truck to not operate at maximum capacity at, at those times, you know, as, as little as possible if, if need be. Always have a little more power than you really need. So that's that's our approach on, on doing that. So that'll be happening here in the coming weeks. Uh, keep an eye out for that. We. Uh, we're going to wrap this one up out here at the Puerco, Rio Puerco. Uh, if you want to take a look at this, it's on our YouTube channel, Tactical Application Vehicles. Catch us on uh, Instagram at TAVLC. And check out our website, TAVLC.com. And we have a brand new site coming up, so keep an eye on that. You can also see this truck and trailer. We'll have it displayed at Overland Expo here in about three weeks. Probably about two weeks in Flagstaff. So come by and check it out. We'll have a couple more videos out before then too, so you can see all three of these vehicles that will be in our booth, uh, see them on hand. So if you got any questions, just give us a call at the shop in Albuquerque and uh, we'll get you squared away. Woo! Yeah. <laughs>